and welcome to an episode of Jacob's House of Rock. Today, I've got something a little different for you guys. Today, I'm going to be doing an electronics tutorial on how to make your very own, very inexpensive, uh, speaker cables. Now, um, first thing to get into, speaker cables, they are actually different from your regular ass guitar cables. Uh, they might look the same from the outside, but there is a subtle difference that uh, could mean the difference between your amp blowing up or working perfectly and being a beautiful riff machine. Um, so basically, with your regu regular guitar cables, uh, they're built differently, so I'll just show you an example of one. <laughs> so here's a, a guitar cable, it's coming out very blurry, I apologize, but let's, it's kind of hard to make out, but on on the top you see that there is a central core that's the hot lead and that is in the very middle of the cable it's one piece of wire followed by uh, covered in insulate insulating plastic as you see there and around that you see the negative wire at the bottom there is actually a sort of a, me a, a weaved mesh of wires that covers the outside of that wire in, in the core so there's the core, and oh, sorry, and this here, that is actually the um, the protective mesh, the insulation. That's what it's called, the insulating mesh that we sort of uh, wind together at this very end and add to the negative lead of your um, uh, your quarter inch jack here. So, what is the difference between this and a speaker cable well a speaker cable like this one here if I take it apart so you see this one instead of having a, a, a central core and a, a mesh around it that we then use as the negative lead we just have two thick wires running through this lead the blue one being the negative and the red one being the positive there um, attached to the positive and negative terminals of your jack and that makes a big difference uh, when you're running a really hot loud uh, guitar sound out of your amp in to drive your speakers you need thicker more durable cables that can handle that that um, amount of current and voltage and all of that uh, so basically that's why they build them that way because Potentially, if you use the guitar cable, they have thinner wires in them because they don't really need thick wires and they have that mesh that wraps around. Now, you don't need that mesh for a speaker cable because the current isn't going to get any inter electrical interference. It's, you know, it's quite strong. With a gu guitar cable, it's very weak. That's why you have that mesh around it because it helps filter out any electronic interference. Um, so those are the main differences. But what's really important to note is if you're playing, especially playing, a valve amplifier, you know, um, one with uh, vacuum tubes in it. Uh, if your speaker uh, cable malfunctions and your speaker is no longer connected to the amp, uh, there's a possibility that it will break. You'll overload your amp because it needs the speaker to be in the circuit, otherwise uh, there's just... It, it malfunctions basically and could blow up or all sorts of weird shit. So that's, um, that's why we'll be making a cheap speaker cable. Now, um, what I've, um, you know, you go online, you try and look at speaker cables, they're like, oh, like 10, 15 dollars for this cable here, um, or more, they can be quite expensive depending on where you buy them, also there's stuff like that. However, you can actually get them costing next to nothing, just mere cents, or just like two, two dollars, really. If you, if you get one of these cables, you can, um, these cables, uh, it, you can kind of see these are your run-of-the-mill um, power cables that you would have attached to a um, power uh, outlet um, from you know like from mains power to any sort of appliance you can cut these off of old televisions and all sorts of stuff like that and you see these have two uh, colored wires a red and a blue of course the actual color of the wire doesn't matter at all as long as it's just to indicate so you know where to uh, solder it basically but you just need something that has two thick wires, and this sort of mains cable would work perfectly. Um, so what we can do with this is we're going to strip off the ends, get the wires cleaned up, and all you need 
is you need a couple of uh, quarter inch jacks. Now, I got two here. I got a whole bag of these for just a couple of dollars off, I think this was AliExpress, you can find them on eBay, all sorts of stuff. They just come from China. Um, you can get a whole big amount of these and yeah, these would work perfectly fine. So here are our cables. Uh, here, here are our components for our cable. Um, the only other thing you need, you know, soldering iron, solder, maybe a, a, a little knife to strip the wire. It's basically all you need. So you can see these have these little plastic uh, sleeves in here just to help protect it. Um, I'm also going to use a, what's it called, some shrink wrap, uh, some sh uh, heat shrink tubing just to help cover, cover the wires once it's, you know, soldered together to protect them on the inside of this so they don't touch anything and short out because that would be bad, especially for your amp again. So yeah, I'm going to cut away and I'll show you <laughs> the process of making this cable. Alright, so here's our workspace. First step would be to strip this wire. Um, all you really need for that is a knife like this. Of course you can use wire strippers, they would make life a lot easier. So just, you know, maybe about, maybe about, you know, how would you say, just about an inch in a imperial measurement or actually less, maybe like a centimeter and a half, which is less than an inch worth of material. So. It's kind of hard to do this on camera, but you just kind of run your knife gently around the edge of this until you start to see it uh, coming apart, and then you tug on it a little bit to spurt, get it apart even more. Just a bit back here. And then it just comes clean off. So, now with that wire off, we just do the basically the same thing to both the, these leads. Uh, maybe like half a centimeter, five mil of the wire will take off of both the red and the blue lead. Well, I suppose it's more like um, a brown and a blue lead on these. great thing about speaker wire too is you can actually make it pretty long compared to say a guitar cable which the longer you have it the sort of uh, more highs it drains from the sound due to capacitance speaker cable since it has that strong current doesn't react uh, quite the same way so you can have a pretty long speaker cable without um, any real issues so that's why I'm making this thing so far I only have a little very short speaker cable and I always find myself wanting to you know experiment by changing amps and cabs and stuff like that and I always have to fiddle with this really short cable uh, so I figured I may as well put this together since I have some of these parts so I'm just twisting this wire just to get it a nice uh, clean end here now personally um, I always prefer to have the cool color as the negative and the, and the warmer one is the hot so the blue will be uh, negative and the brownie red will be the positive. So what we do, and we're going to do this for both sides. So we take apart our jack here. The jack comes in all these little parts as a spring bit and a sleeve that goes over the spring. So these kind of go together. So. So. The spring uh, spring in this thing go um, on first the springs having a little trouble slipping back through this but I'm just gonna put those on first because you need to make sure to do that I mean since this is my first side of it I don't really need to because I can slip it on through the back because I haven't uh, done the jack on the other side but to prepare uh, just to make sure you always put those on first because if you forget to and solder it on then you kind of screwed and so what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to get some uh, some of this, which is shrink, shrink um, heat shrink tubing. I'm going to get a little bit of that cut and to slide over these before we actually 
uh, solder it on because um, again we're not going to be able to uh, get that to whoops that one flew away I'm not going to get that to slide on once it's uh, been soldered <laughs> and this is just a little extra precaution just to, just to make sure it all goes together well now we don't really need it on the negative lead just need it on one of them so the positive sorry it's so blurry again so now I'm just gonna slide over the little other plastic cover because again that's gonna be something that we're gonna uh, have to use uh, slide back over once this is attached so the blue lead is gonna sit in this hole here sometimes you'll have a hole in the bottom of this so you can just wrap it around this bit of metal it just needs to be connected to this metal um, but the uh, the, t the tip here the positive is connected to this little little lead here and you can see this one is a little bit further out so if you have a bit a bit of a longer wire it helps to uh, attach it to this one while this one just needs a really short wire but you know all of these jacks may vary depending on brand and stuff like that I just got really cheap ones like I said from AliExpress and another reason I want to make sure this sits perfectly in there is because these jacks they have these um, little arms these you see these metal bits that stick up here these are designed to squeeze around this part which is the white part of this cable so that's going to squeeze around there and it's going to help hold the cable together so you don't yank it out and break your cable by accident so it'll have a little more protection so having this be able to sit a bit closer is going to help that work better so again i'm sorry my hands are blocking everything and this video is a little bit isn't the greatest but i, I thought I'm, I'm gonna be making this cable anyway, so I might as well show you guys how to how to do it. Um, the cables, this wire is a little bit too thick actually, so I'm gonna just uh, split it into two little um, two little bits, and I'm gonna use those to sort of manually wrap around that little hole in the jack, and that'll help it um, stay secure as well. So there we go, I've put, fed that through, and then I can get the other end of this pulled around here. And then I can twist these together. Once it's already sort of in there. And that way it's manually, you know, fixed on, onto this. So if you're planning on replacing this cable in the future, oh sorry, it's so blurry. Um, if you're planning on replacing this cable in the future, Come on. Then it's gonna be tr you're gonna have to just cut that all off. It's gonna be a bit trickier, but since these are you know old cheap parts, I can always make this again, buy more parts. I have no plans on changing this cable out. Jeez, come on, focus, focus, you camera. Sorry about this, guys. All right, sorry about that, guys. I just got irritated with the camera, so I changed the focus settings. So now you have a nice macro look at what's going on. Um, blue cable attached that little hole. I just manually twisted it around. I'm going to do the same thing with the hot input here. So we get our uh, brown cable. I'm going to put. I split. I split this uh, cable up into two segments again, just so I can get it to fit through these little holes. Twist both of these into little bits like that again depending on the wire you're, you're using you don't have to use super thick wire even though I like I said the um, guitar the reason speaker cables are a bit different is because these thicker wires you still don't need to go absolutely insane and use like super thick wire or anything so just just something a little bit little bit better than your guitar cable would generally do yeah, that looks pretty cool pretty good Pull that through. Now again, you don't have to uh, twist it this much. Um, the solder should hold it in place. But I find with you know guitar cables and all sorts of cables like this, just 
this helps it just be even more protected, just just to be safe. Well, there we go. So this would work in its uh, present form if you do this on both sides, but what hel it helps if you actually solder the damn thing, I find, so <laughs> that's what we're going to do now. Alright, so I've got my soldering iron ready. It's been heating up for a couple of minutes now. Um, what I need to do is, I, I never had my uh, the tip of my soldering iron tinned. And every time I tried, it just failed, which is basically where you wrap solder around it and then turn it on and then it like coats it so it's always nice and fresh. So mine gets this horrible black coating. So every couple of minutes while I'm soldering, I have to grab a pair of pliers and kind of attack the tip of it to sh show off the raw metal underneath. Because um, otherwise it will not melt the solder. But this, this method seems to work pretty well for me. Um... So, if, if you have a better soldering iron or a method for it, then do that, because I'm sure there's a million better ways to deal with this issue than what I do. But it works well enough. Uh, it's, it, it should look a little bit more golden, and it looks a little more golden in person. But how you solder, you heat up the joint is very important first, um, just to get it, uh, that'll help it bind, and then you just touch the solder onto there and keep holding that joint and it should flow through it so the more you heat up this the better it should uh, stick to it so that's the rule of solder if something's hot it's gonna flow towards it and stick to it because uh, that's a big issue of solder so that side should be done now we'll just flip it over see if yeah that one soldered on nicely and we do the same thing to this uh, lower one down here so I'll just flip it around this way for you guys to see so we're just gonna be doing the same thing on this spot whoops so again need to clean my soldering iron because it's a bit of a piece of crap have your solder ready. Just touch that just to heat it up and point that through. There you go. You should have seen that solder the longer I held it, it began to flow down and cover that joint well. And there we go. So now our wires are attached well. All we're going to do is I'm just going to uh, grab this heat shrink bit if it hasn't already shrank too much and slide it up slide it up to cover a little exposed piece up here there we go this is kind of important because if you don't have that protected then your cable could short out now even though it does come with uh, that little sleeve that goes over the top I find that if you just make sure and do this then that'll help a lot and you could do this in a number of ways but what I do is I just gently touch it with the soldering iron and that'll shrink the, the shrink wrap tight around that and it won't come off because it'll be uh, sealed well so there we go so just to complete this side and bring up every all those little bits that we slid down uh, earlier so first is oh actually first what we need to do is we need to close this off so just get a pair of pliers like so I should have had more of this uh, white material going up into it that would have made it work a little bit better so on the other side I'm probably gonna try to have more more of this uh, uh, going through so shorter leads because that's what it needs to grip onto so all I'm gonna do is squeeze that down and that should in, hopefully hold that secure so I'm 
once that's ready, we get our plastic sleeve. That just slides over the top. Make sure this is all straight. Slide. Ah, okay, there we go. Over the top of that. Now it's all sealed up. And just put this through. And you screw this. A lot of these will have slightly different methods, but this is a pretty common one. And there you go. There is one end of your speaker cable uh, put together. And uh, hopefully this one will last a long time and won't, you know, yank out or anything. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing on this end. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and all that jazz. And, um, yeah, keep on rocking, people. Peace out. And sorry again about the blurry video <laughs> for most of it. If you guys have any more tips and tricks and stuff like that about this sort of stuff, do let me know, because uh, it'll help me out. And it'll hopefully help out anyone else who's watching these videos. But, yeah, see you guys. Bye.